All right, so today we're going to be testing Dune Awakening with the RX 5070. Here's my full system specs here. We have uh, Windows 11 Pro fully updated, and uh, then we have, it's 24H2, right? So fully updated Windows 11. We got the latest hotfix driver, 576.66, which fixes a crashing issue with the Dune Awakening. I did not have any crashing with 576.52, but if you do have, just load this driver. And then we have a 7800X3D uh, processor with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 uh, 6000 megatransfers per second CL30 memory. And then if we have a look at our MSI Afterburner here, you can see we don't have any tuning on this GPU. We have everything running at stock, no power limits, no voltage curves, and no overclocking, no nothing all right let's get right into the benchmarks all right so with all the specifications that kind of stuff out of the way let's have a look at the game's performance and yeah we are a 1080p ultra dlaa setting native and i know not a lot of you will probably play at 1080p with the 5070 but some of you will so that's why i included it we'll be testing at 1080p 1440p and 4k now i'm changing up the formula of my videos a little bit we will do preset scaling dlss scaling and also frame generation scaling uh, but it'll be shorter right because i want to make my videos a bit shorter while still showing all the settings here now the game does start up quite a bit it is an unreal engine 5 game but it does seem to be shadow compilation starters mostly and uh, there are some very very few traversal starters that i've come across but yeah we have an average of 100 frames per second which i think is pretty decent now if we have a look at our preset scaling we have uh, about 95 frames per second with the on the ultra preset then 110 on the high preset and then 120 with the medium preset then if we test some dlss scaling once again 90 ish frames per second with dla a 120 with dlss quality and 130 with dlss balanced and right here we have the frame generation portion i do have the pc latency numbers as well and i mean you can just pause and look at whichever numbers you want all right so here we have 1440p once again testing the ultra preset DLA native uh, but just because that's what I've been testing uh, at 1080p we'll be testing this at 4k as well and then we'll repeat the tests for the high preset scaling or the preset scaling and DLSS scaling that kind of stuff again but we are able to maintain 60 frames per second here at 1440p even on the ultra preset at a native right now I have to point out this is the CNN model we will be looking at transformer model tests a little bit later in the video as well but I do think the 57 is doing a pretty decent job here. You can see our VRAM used is reported below 6 gigabyte. Now, that's not 100% accurate, I'd say, because you might start running out of VRAM um, when it starts reporting 11 gigabytes, right? Um, so it doesn't mean we still have 6 gigabytes left, but... The, the game's VRAM usage is quite low, but the system RAM, the system usage is uh, very high. Now, if we get to preset scaling, once again, 80 frames per second on the ultra preset, around 90 on the high preset, and then again, about 100 on the medium preset. I do think 1440p high is probably your best bet here. And then if we have uh, DLSS scaling, once again, with DLA native, 80 frames per second right the DLSS quality bumps that up to just over 100 frames per second which is pretty decent and then DLSS balanced that bumps us up to about 113 and once again just the frame generation results with the latency PC latency numbers there and you can see that uh, the game supports all the way from 2x up to 4x so just use whichever one you prefer they they all work very well there's very little ghosting and artifacting even in crosses even on uh, mfg 4x and the latency is definitely usable i think the mfg implementation in this game is pretty good now i did taste 4k ultra dla native as well it's not a 4k ultra gpu this um there's really <laughs> I just wanted to see the VRAM usage and report that. So currently we have uh, VRAM used just below seven gigabytes, right? So this game is actually very light on, on VRAM. And that is true for a lot of Unreal Engine 5 games. They do tend to, to be quite light on VRAM. Not all of them, but some of them are. But yeah, you can see we're pretty far away from a locked 60 frames per second experience i mean we in, in the mid 40s here but we'll have a look at how preset scaling and dlss scaling works there for us just wanted to play around a little bit here all right so if we then have a look at our preset scaling here we have uh, ultra high and medium and neither of them can get you 60 frames per second when we use native right but for 4k i do believe the high with dlss 
quality is pretty good. That's why I tested, why is that one so blurry? There we go. All right, so for, for this one, that's why I tested 4K high with DLSS, quality, balance, and performance. And you can see the DLSS quality on the 4K high will get you 80 frames per second, whereas DLSS performance will get you around 90. Now with frame generation enabled, I have to say the 4K high preset with DLSS set to quality and 2X FG delivers a very, very good experience here. All right, now if we have a look at our CNN model versus uh, transformer model, you can see that it starts off a little bit heavier on the transformer model, which is on the left, but they do actually normalize a little bit. They both are sitting at 77 frames per second. Yeah. Now this game is a little bit difficult to benchmark because at time moves on with even if you're not in the game so it's very difficult to go out of the game come back into the same spot at the same time of day that kind of stuff right but i want to point out here that at 4k the the difference between dla dlss uh, cnn model and transform model it's actually quite big at 1440p there was almost no difference but you're at 4k there is quite a big difference and when we actually enable dlss quality here next you'll see i'm not sure whether you should actually just that, that, take these results with a little bit of pinch of salt because that difference is quite high i can reproduce it every time but i'm not sure if it's maybe a bug because uh, previous presets we did not see this right all right so that's basically the end of this uh, benchmark run. I just wanted to change up the formula a little bit and try and get as much info across as possible. I know it might come across as maybe rushed. I'm not trying to rush it. Uh, it. This actually takes me a lot longer to edit than any of the previous formats that I, I thought to try. So this video in particular took about six hours to edit for about seven minutes of a playtime so it is very time consuming but i don't mind doing this if this is what uh, what you guys like um i personally would prefer something like this because it gives me a lot of info in a much shorter amount of time if i had to test every single setting with a full benchmark run like i used to in all my previous videos the video would be 28 minutes long just look at my 5060 ti video with the dune awakening that was 23 26 i can't even remember okay and and i try to make as quick as possible during those as well but then i also want to test all the settings properly so i want to i'm not too concerned about views on this specific video right i, I want to get some feedback if you don't mind maybe just let me know in the comments whether you like it or not any suggestions I think what I'll do when I test DLSS and frame generation and that kind of stuff side by side, I won't use the frame time graph. I won't use Afterburner for that. I think it takes up a little bit more screen space than necessary. So I'll tweak tweak things a little bit, but I think this is the formula that I'll be using going forwards. All right, I think that's going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.